Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, I'm going to be possibly spending longer on the introduction than I am painting this miniature. I'm going to be trying to put some paint on Pippa. She is a Kickstarter exclusive from Zombicide Black Plague, and I think it's probably the easiest, simplest, quickest miniature in Black Plague to get painted and onto the table. I'm still going to use contrast paints in this one. I'm loving painting zombie side by the way. If you guys haven't been noticing, I'm big on zombies. There's a zombie painting competition currently running on our Kickstarter and I mean that that sort of spawned from the fact that I'm really enjoying just smashing some contrast paint onto my Kickstarter exclusives, just getting more heroes to choose from very very quickly. I'm not particularly massively interested in this miniature. She doesn't appeal to me in any way shape or form but She's like four colours, so she's going to be a great choice for somebody to play with in a couple of minutes of painting. So I'm going to use Gulliman's Flesh, and that's going to be for all of the flesh. Colour number one, and you're going to be about a third of the miniature done once you've done this. Now, I'm not watering this down, but I am going to be using my small brush, my Redgrass Games Double Zero, and I'm going to be applying it very thinly. So... It looks quite thick, but I'm going to be then spreading that around to a very, very thin layer and letting that just then pool itself and giving her quite a light complexion. Hopefully, we'll see. Contrast sometimes has a little bit of a mind of its own. I'm not going to complain too much because I'll be done in a minute and can't, can't, can't knock that. I think a few, a couple of minutes on a miniature is uh, no matter what standard this comes out to, it's going to be pretty cool and a miracle that's a face lightly done i'm just going to do the same on our arms now we can always add two coats if it's not thick enough i'd rather have overly thin than overly thick but even when i do this thin sometimes it ends up being more tan than i expected which is why i've started watering down this and applying building up the layers but because this minute is going to be so quick, I just I honestly, I just wanted to see if I could do it in like five to ten minutes. So arms complete, so we're just onto the legs. And this will be the easiest bit of the skin because they're pretty flat. Just need to be a bit careful. Mostly, oops, I was going to say mostly around the skirt. And then I caught the boots mostly around this skirt. So that's going to be painted white. And that's not going to hide any skin that I catch on it, I would have to touch that up. Whereas the boots are going to be some kind of grey and that will hide this flesh tone way too dark on that side. So we'll just shift that around a little bit like so. And then just let that pull itself into the recesses. One leg to go, guys. What are we at? No, two minutes so far. One third down. Now I am going to paint the details of this so it will take a little bit of time, no matter what, painting in eyeballs takes a steady hand and a little bit of patience. I can imagine having to add some blood to this miniature as I get towards the end because it's it just doesn't appeal to me. It's going to be so dull. We'll see, we'll see. Any painted miniature is better than no painted miniature. Right, next I'm basically going to do the whole model. I'm going to use Apocryphery White and I'm going to apply that all over her top dress, robe whatever we want to call it. I'll probably even get it all over this belt because this won't be hard to paint over the top. Now this is just going to be a very light grey and as it runs and pulls into the recesses pulling away from the top, from the highlights of all the folds it should make it look white with a grey shadow and that's basically the artwork right? Nice and simple. I wonder how many of you out there are going to change the artwork, she could have an interesting coloured robe on. Let me know in the comments below if that's the sort of thing you've done, you'll do, or are you going to paint this one? Does anybody like this model for some reason? What is, I don't I don't know who she is. I don't know um, what it's a homage to. Let me know in the comments below who she's supposed to be. I don't forget to try and get some underneath. You can see up her skirt and it would be nice that there's some shadows in there. While her robes are drying, we'll get on to the next colour, Basilican Grey, on her boots. And this is going to take about 20 seconds, using the big brush still, same as I did on the robes. Um, they, they do look semi-lightish grey, so I'll make sure I move this paint around and, and not let it 
super dark, but grey's grey. Carefully going to get the top of the boot. Bit of a mould line there. Didn't remove them before I started painted. I, I, I actually don't think I could make that much better. Not without a lot of work. and <laughs> take far longer than this miniature would to paint. Plus, I'm not sure she's going to get that much table time. But by all means, spend a bit of time removing that mould line if you, if you care a bit more. One on this side as well. Don't think it's going to detract too much from this. Oh, I should mention while I'm talking about mould lines, her sword was really, really bent. If anybody else has a similar issue with her having a bent sword or bent swords full stop, there is a video on the channel showing you how very quickly and easily to fix bent parts of a miniature. Boot's done. You can use a little splash of Nasdreg yellow to give her that sort of yellowy dark brown blondy not dark brown, dark blonde hair. You could use a yandy yellow if you want her to be really golden, or I don't know. The colour was quite interesting to me. It looked a little bit orange, a little bit blonde, but I've gone for this. I think it'll be a, probably the closest I can get with the paints that I've got. Plus, it's quite a nice, interesting colour as well. Give a nice bright hairdo. So, yeah, just paint the. Paint the hair in this, easy process. So I just wanted to mention off camera, I've used wild wood, another contrast paint. That's to do a belt. Now I, I didn't want to paint that on camera because there's not a lot to see and I just wouldn't need to that, get that close. It was risky doing the brown on the white, but it's come out fine. You don't have to use contrast. Maybe you could count that as a detail. The belt's big enough that you can quite easily apply it, but it's quite flat. The contrast didn't really add much to it. I just wanted to get another contrast done. Now I'm going to go to bed, let that dry thoroughly <laughs> through thoroughly um, and then I'm going to come back and paint some details that's all the contrast work done so I'm going to add some details I'm going to be using army painters machine gun metal that's the dark silver and that's going to be adding the base coat to these blades that she's got I'm just going to paint them all entirely in this silver I really 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 love the army painters metallics and uh, they're a lot of fun to paint and it's a great way to stay in shape I'll be catching the blade the hilt, the handle, and the pommels all in the same colour. That's It looks like she's got completely silver blades in the artwork, so I'll just stick along with that using the double zero brush. This is a bit fiddly to reach in between her fingers, which have already been painted. I do think the skin's actually come out as the worst of all the contrast, but zombie side is super forgiving. You know, they're all like peasanty, medieval style characters. So the skin being a little bit patchy kind of just looks like she's a little bit dirty. If you're into that sort of thing. I'll be painting this large sword exactly the same as the small. Just catch all of it. We're going to be highlighting up these blades next. So I'm going to use Claymore Blade. It's army paint as light as silver. I'm just going to catch some of the raised parts of this. So a little bit on the pommel here, the hilt there. I'll catch the edge quite generously of this massive sword. What sort of sword's this? It's massive. I want to say bastard sword, just because I want to swear. Get some edge highlighting a little bit on the front of the blade too. Then we'll do exactly the same on the back. A little bit on that pommel there, a little bit across the hilt, and then a little bit of generous edge highlighting just coming down onto the flat of the blade. Get that point too. And same on the bottom side. We'll do exactly the same. This dagger on this side, a little bit on that pommel, across the hilt. And this time we'll go down the centre of the blade as well. Just edge highlighting. Just using the side of the brush, just carefully catching the centre. And I'll do the same along the sides of the blade too. This time not being very generous. We just catch the front of the pommel, the hilt again, and down the centre here. I've already caught the sides from the back. And that will do. Next up, we're going to use a splishy splash, a teeny tiny bit of army paint as dark tone. That's the black wash. And that's just going to be to make some of these details pop out on the blades that I've painted in. So I'm going to use some pinpoint shading 
just catching the areas I want to look a little bit darker. So that's bringing out the detail around the handle and the pommel here. And then we're just going to catch a little bit along the top side of this hill just to make a bit of a definition between the blade and the hill. I'll just blend that carefully up slightly, only only slight amount of darkening here. But it will make the field a little bit stick out a little bit better. We'll do the same on the bigger blade, which you'll probably see working a little bit better. So we'll get around that gem there. You could paint that gem in a different colour. It's not a different colour in the artwork, but it will make this miniature look a little bit more interesting and give a bit sort of better definition to the blade because they're a bit blah, aren't they, when they're just painted as depicted in the artwork, just that black. And then on this larger blade, I can't remember what this is called. I did look it all up once upon a time, but surprisingly, sword terms just I just don't use them that often. But yeah, the center of the blade here is recessed. So I'm going to put some of this wash in there, just make that blade pop out that little bit more. It'll probably lighten up slightly as this dries. So that's a little bit over poppy for my liking, but we'll see. So I'll do the same on the back. Working out this pommel again. I really, I don't want to venture away from the artwork, but if that was just painted as a gem, using some gemstone paint, something like that, you could have a really, really interesting looking sword there with very little extra work. I'm going to do the same on the back side of this dagger as well, just a little bit around the hilt. I'm getting close to being done now, and I'm just going to mix it up just a little bit and do, do my base painting. I normally leave this to the very end, but what I'm doing here is I'm procrastinating. I don't want to have to do the face. The face is so small, and most of the detail in this miniature is actually on that face. So I need to I'm just, I'm just delaying as long as I can. Now, obviously, you might all be painting your bases differently. I, I'm i just doing my zombie side in plain black. I, I started doing them before I really started getting into basing and realizing that basing is really, really easy and you can make miniatures look infinitely better really, really quickly. But with zombie side, yeah, I'm just, I just paint them black. Now, you do want to finish your base, even if you're going to come back later. Maybe a lot of people will do the basing all together at the end. So I would still advise just painting black. It takes, a, it takes like a minute. It takes no time at all. And it's going to make your paint job just look that much better. It really pops the miniature away from this base that you don't really care about. So yeah, plain black for me. This is Army Painters Dead Black, which is from their Zombie Side range, which I bought to paint Zombie Side with, but it's the same as their matte black. I can delay it no more. It is time to paint the super difficult face details. Now, guys, I've switched down. Look at this. This is from Model Box. This is the smallest brush I own, Triple Zero, from Model Box. Here we go. I'm going to use Basilis Brown, a yellowy brown from the Army Painter. And that's going to be to paint in her eyebrows. Pro tip, guys, I've mentioned this a few times. If you're lucky enough to be short sighted, as I am myself, take your glasses off. It's like zoom and enhance for free. I would actually, for this, put on my magnifying headset if I knew where it was since I moved house, and I do not. Well, that's super thin. It's going to take a lot of coats, but that's all you need to do. Just build up these eyebrows. A good six coats later, and the eyebrows are done. But, yeah, slow and steady. Next, I'm on to the eyeballs themselves. I'm going to be using the Army Painter's Crushed Skull. It's a slightly off-white white. It's a little bit grey, a little bit not perfectly white, which is, I think, quite nice for eyeballs. And then again, sticking to this triple zero brush. I probably will tidy this up a bit closer to my face off camera. And then water down this paint, so it's kind of doing the job for me, just running into that eyeball socket. Then for the other side, I'll turn her upside down, so I've got a better angle, he says. Still looks ridiculously hard. They look pretty uneven. I'm going to go get it nice and close to my face and just tidy that up next. 
right off camera decided to fly too close to the sun they're not the best eyes in the world but i added in some void shield blue pupil um not pupils irises and then i added some black pupils on top don't get me wrong in person at a reasonable distance well on the table you ain't going to see the eyes full stop but just in my hand they look great they're, they're fine up oh, nice and close on camera you can see i'm a bit special but it is what it is it'll do pig it'll do i'm going to try <laughs> i'm going to mess up the lips next by using some tanned flesh they're much darker in the artwork so i just wanted to darken them up a little teeny tiny bit so i'm going to start with some tanned flesh see how that looks Oh yeah, keeping with the small brush, just adding a teeny tiny bit, something like that. Maybe a couple of coats of that just to darken them down. I actually ended up just mixing in 50-50 crusted soil with that, and that's about the colour in the artwork. This face, what have I done to it? <laughs> Why so serious? But I do think uh, actually looking dead close to Scoops is not that good in the face, and at distance it does, it does honestly look pretty decent. So bear that in mind, you won't be this... Look how close we are. I'm going out of focus at an inch. That's how close we are to the camera. You're gonna be you're gonna be you're gonna be more looking at oh still bad. Who knows? And that is it guys. That took absolutely no time. I should have smashed that out years ago. I would have had an extra hero to choose from. I think this is a very, very nice miniature for you guys to start with. If you're brand new to painting, you've only got to pick up a handful of paints. You don't have to learn how to do very much. Apply some contrast and then mess up some details afterwards. No, take your time with the details. It's And remember, once you step away, you can't see that teeny tiny detail. You're going to make it look absolutely amazing. For 10, 20 minutes work, it's nothing at all now guys don't forget we are running our first ever painting competition over on patreon and it is zombie themed so zombie side's perfect there is actually only a few days left to enter if you're interested in that so go and check that out immediately and paint something up try and beat this that won't be hard you'll be in with a chance of winning anyway guys let me know which other kickstarter exclusives you'd like to see painted up in the comments below and i'll see you again next week